Welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> this is like the third time I'm recording this intro. Um, so anyways, welcome back. We are here today to talk about our first book review. Uh, this book review is about the Bush twins. It's called Sisters First. Um, so basically they wrote this book talking about their time in the White House and their childhood with their grandparents. Um, their, mainly their granddad who was the first Bush and then their second dad, um, George W.H. Bush. And they were just spending how they spent their time with him, uh, what they got to experience, and all these stories with Lee mostly from when they were children. And I chose this book because I first read the book Becoming by Michelle Obama and I figured if I read one on the dem Democratic side I should probably read something on the Republican side just to keep my mind open and try to, you know, try to be open to all people and it turned out really good. I'm really glad I read it. Um, I wish I did do a book review of Michelle Obama's book so that way maybe we can, you know, have one of each. I'm starting my book review channel now. So this is what we have. Okay, so I got my phone here just to go over a few things that um, I thought were interesting about the book. First I have it set up for all the facts that I think are interesting that they kind of went through. And then I have individual sections of Barbara and Jenna, and then finally at the end I come back with uh, what they both have in common. So I'm just going to go over a few of these. I think that there, some of them are just, you know, some of them are very shocking. Some of them are kind of like, like, okay, this is just basic sistery things, but I guess it's kind of warming to like listen to it and read it because it reminds me of my sister and how close we are sometimes and it's just kind of nice to be like oh yeah that bond is such a special bond so i did enjoy reading this book let's get down into the actual book itself okay the first thing i thought was interesting um was the dynamic between their mother they mentioned this early on in the book and it was saying how their mom <clears throat> was not familiar with having siblings laura bush their mother um, she never had siblings growing up, so she, she, it was hard for her to cope with having two kids who had each other and she wasn't used to that companionship. That was something they went over in the book and I just thought that was very interesting. I never really thought about that with people who were, um, who've never had brothers and sisters and how their relationship would be with their kids and how it affects them with not having siblings growing up. So I thought that was very interesting. And the next thing I found interesting was that the 43rd President Bush, uh, what their father was a painter. I thought that was very interesting. I never knew that he had a hobby of painting. I didn't think that that was something I could ever imagine him doing. And it kind of, you know, I was just like, oh, that's very interesting. I like to paint on my side just to be like, oh, okay, I have something in common with someone that I don't really know and that I've always kind of had like wishy-washy feelings with, with him about, you know, going to war and stuff. And it's just like nice to know like, oh, okay, I have something in common with this person that brings us back down to um, to the fact that we're just human beings and uh, that we both like to paint. I thought that was interesting. He liked to focus on painting veterans, um, some of the people that went to war during his, uh, sir during his time of service. And it was just very interesting. He said he was inspired um, by people he loved, mostly did portraits. It was about their grandfather, the first Bush that was president. He, um, he was married to his wife, Barbara Bush, they're very famous, um, and being that they were the president <laughs> and his first lady, but the thing that I thought was interesting about their relationship is that they were each other's first kiss. They met when they were about 16 years old, and they met at this party, and they both have never kissed anyone, they've never been with anyone else, and they were each other's first kiss, and they were with each other for the rest of their life, and I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so um, going on to the next one. The last kind of interesting fact that I had, I was surprised, and this is kind of silly, but I was surprised that Beyonce performed at the inauguration ball for Bush. Um, I just thought that was very interesting, especially after the experience with Trump and him having such a hard time of finding someone to perform at his inauguration. I always thought that maybe, like, you know, Hollywood was never into uh, Republicans and that it was always hard, but to find out that Beyonce, like Queen B, performed at, you know, the inauguration ball, I was pretty surprised to hear that. Um, and then the girls kind of went on to complain how they had a hard time meeting celebrities because of their, um, their father's position and they were, um, 
there wasn't that many celebrities that were interested in meeting them. But they did meet you too, so that was a good friend of their father's. Okay, now we're going to be moving on to Barbara Bush. Um, this one is the brunette. She has blue eyes, very beautiful. Um, I found her to be very interesting, um, the more interesting of the two. Um, so I'm going to go on and go ahead with her starting off to when she was in high school. But these are the notes I took down now. Um, it says that she lost her boyfriend to suicide. His name was Kyle. Um, when she was in high school, he was a very young kid and he tried to call her the night before and she, um, she missed the phone call because she was sick in bed and in the morning she found out that he died and it was just very sad. This is one of the few things I found very relatable in the book. I found it relatable because I lost my friend to suicide. So for her to go through something like that, I had a lot of empathy for her. It's kind of eye-opening to see that, you know, like a lot of people, no matter which class you're from, like something like suicide can affect everyone. So that happened when she was very young. Um, another interesting fact that happened when she was in high school is that she was an exchange student. She went to Rome. Um, all by herself. She didn't go with her twin sister Jenna. She was an exchange student for a year in Rome. Um, that takes a lot of bravery. I was pretty interested in that. Um, after high school she went to school to go to Yale um, where she did not, She did pretty great. There were some stories that she told when she was in Yale. Um, I thought one of the stories that I thought was uh, interesting was the one that um, one of the professors, she was getting like mediocre grades and she went to go talk to the professors and they said they would give her a better grade if she talked to her father, the president, if he would uh, not go to war. And I thought that was just, it was like horrible. I was like, wow, like that's just crazy. She should definitely be reported for that <laughs> because that is, uh, that is not good. That's not a good teacher. So um, as she got older, she started to like uh, form her own opinions. She did have some conversations with her dad about her opinions. Um, one of the ones that she mentions in the book is that she got in the discussions, um, debates with her father about gay marriage. She was um, very pro-gay marriage. She had a friend that was gay and she supported it um, and that's just something that President Bush did not support. She became the CEO of a global health organization that she founded and I thought that was pretty cool. That something seems very hard to achieve and you can tell that she's a very big businesswoman. She's going around the world um, building this wonderful foundation and uh, helping people all around the world and that's where her main interest lies. She's not uh, focused on a relationship right now um, which compared to her sister which I'll talk about is more of a family oriented person. So that was something that you know, was a little different. Not everyone go down that road. The last thing I have to say about Barbara is that she's uh, she's de she's from what I see from the book and um, from what I've read. It said that uh, Barbara Brooke was more introspective. Um, it that she you know stayed by herself, more of an introvert. Uh, that she was interested in architecture for a while there, but it doesn't really. It was just a brief comment, and I thought it was interesting. Uh, enough to note down here that she was interested in architecture, um, but she did not did not go any further with it, and I guess she didn't take a further interest in it because she didn't go to school for that. So um, that is all there is about Barbara. Now moving on to Jenna. So Jenna, I don't have too much on Jenna. Um, now this twin, she's the blonde hair. She uh, now has a family. In comparison to Barbara, where Barbara doesn't really have a family, she doesn't have any kids or anything, she has a boyfriend, but um, Jenna is the more married one, she's settled down now, um, and so I'm going to dive into what I know about her. So growing up, she was more of the creative one and very dramatic. She always put on shows around the house, uh, around the holidays, she'd make a play, have all the cousins in it and direct the play, Then uh, so she was more of an uh, outgoing extrovert. It doesn't say much about when she was in high school, um, it just, it just didn't go across anything like that, but it did say that she went to the University of Texas and that she kind of struggled with her SATs. She wasn't, she just wasn't as good as her sister, so they did have a little bit of, um, a little bit of difference there where her sister was like really good at the SATs and that she said that she struggled with them, um, so therefore it mentions how she went to school in Texas. But then again, it kind of skips over a bunch in her life, and it goes on to where she um, meets her husband, 
Uh, she met him on the campaign when she was working for her father. It doesn't really say much about her. Um, they did tell this funny story about when her husband didn't propose to her and she thought that he was proposing to her. So they went out to eat and they were dating for, I think it was like a year or something like that. And um, so they're out to eat. And before he got out to eat, there's a story about when he proposed to her and she, um, she thought that he was proposing, but he wasn't proposing. So uh, the story goes is that uh, they were both going to be separating for a while for their work duties. And she didn't want to leave and she kept saying, if you ask me to marry you, then I'm not going to leave. So uh, they were going out to dinner one night at this really fancy restaurant and um, he called it ahead of time and they have these little fortune cookies where they'll you open them up and they'll have a little message there. Um, so uh, in the fortune cookie he was going to say, I'll love you when you come back, you know, but the there was a mistranslation there going on between him and the workers at the restaurant and they ran out of cookies and they had champagne bottles and on the champagne bottles uh, it had some kind of message on there. I can't remember what it said. I should have wrote it down. But it, it gave off some kind of vibe that he wanted to marry her. So when the champagne came over to the table, um, she got all excited. And she was like, yay, I'll marry you. And then it turns out that he was like, no, 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 that's not what it's about. So she went through all these phases of like, oh, okay. And then it was just kind of funny. I thought it was funny. I mean, I felt kind of bad for her because I know how when someone wants to get married, they get all worked up about it. But at the same time, I was like, I don't know. It was kind of funny. So the last thing I have to say about Jenna is that, um, yeah, she just wasn't very uh, personal. There was one chapter where I felt like she opened up and she was talking about her reflections on the war after 9-11. It was like the very sensitive chapter about her and her father and how um, they reconnected after 9-11 and how their family came together to be strong. Other than that, I don't really, it just seems like there wasn't much oomph to any of the things that she wrote that I felt like I could connect to or anything like that. Yeah, that's why I think I like Barbara more. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to move on to the both section about what I thought was interesting about both of them. The first thing I thought was interesting is being that their father and their grandfather both were the president is that when they were younger they both ran for a school election in the fourth grade. They both lost but I just thought it was very interesting how maybe that was like a power dynamic within their family that they um they felt like maybe entitled to like rule a little bit or to lead I should say. Uh, I just thought that was very interesting how even at a young age they were taking after their father and their grandfather and how it ran in the family about what they were supposed to do or the expectations for their family. So the next um, the next fact I have about both of them, uh, when they were both in college they both received tickets for um, drinking under the age or attempting to get alcohol beverages under the age. That is the only person that made it in the tabloids was Jenna. Um, they were both you know, charged for that, but Jenna, the more outgoing and the extrovert one, was the one who made it in all the tabloids, you know, she's the one who got all the criticism and said, oh, she's a young drunk and she likes to party, she's a party animal, and then it turns out that, you know, Barbara also got a ticket for that and that, um, it just never made it to the news and she got, she got swept under the rug about it. So when they were, um, going to see their father when he was in the White House for the eight years that he was president. Um, they just went over in the book how very much a struggle to see him as a president. Um, he was down to the minute his schedule was uh, very intricate where it's like every, every few minutes they have to go do something, they have to be on a plane at this exact time, they have to have a press moment at this exact time, they have to walk out of the White House at this exact time so that um, only the Secret Service knows what they're doing and that they can't do anything of spare at the moment. So they just thought that that was a very stressful um, being on camera with their father wherever they went. They had to represent him as the president. They could not uh, do anything outrageous. They couldn't just play around with each other because they were constantly on the camera. 
uh, setting up an image and they had a hard time knowing how to act. There was no book to tell them how to act and they were constantly um, shown as party animals, um, not, not taking their position seriously. It was very hard for them, not knowing what to do and receiving all this criticism about who they were when their parents just told them that they could continue to be uh, just like any other kid. And then they received all this criticism and it was very hard for them. The last thing I have um, about the Bush twins both having in common is that I could tell that they really respected their grandmother Barbara Bush. She said that she was a very serious person and that um, she was very disciplined and she um, um, demanded respect. Uh, there was a few times where she would send like angry letters in the mail to them criticizing them you know because she had such a high level of expectations for them and not only just them as their grandchildren but all of the grandchildren. She just held them all accountable and I just I mean it's understandable she was the first lady you know and she she does have expectations she wants to lead a good image for the country so um, that's something they both went over in the book, how they both saw her as a very um, serious woman. Ooh, it's cold. So now we're gonna go to the overall review and what I think about it. So we're coming to the conclusion of this book review. So first of all, I thought this book was very enlightening. It really brought in the personalities of the girls. I had no idea that the 43rd president actually had twin daughters. So when I found this book, I thought it was very um, cool. I never knew that he had twins. So it was interesting to me to read about the life of these two young girls growing up in the White House. However, I did find them unrelatable. I did find them condescending. And I guess because I've never traveled outside the US or I never um, really got to meet anyone really famous. I did find it a little bit condescending. Um, it's not something I can ever see myself doing. Uh, I know that might be a little bit um, pessimistic, <laughs> but it's just uh, something that I cannot relate to. One of the things I thought it was interesting um, that I wrote down here that it was interesting to hear about Camp David. They talked about it throughout the whole book. And I was like, Camp David, what's so special about Camp David? So finally I looked it up on the internet and Camp David is an exclusive campground. Only You can only visit it if you're invited by the president or you're the president's family. And I thought that was um, pretty cool. Um, never heard of that before, so that's something else I learned. Critique I have for the book is that the chapters so the chapters seem to like skip around sometimes it would be like when they were kids like it starts off when they're kids and then it would go up to when they were teenagers and then it would go back down to when they were kids and then it would jump up to when they were adults and then back down to kids and then teenager it just it was very disorganized um and another thing is that when it came to their grandparents, the names were kind of tricky. I had to really like slow down and be like, okay, this is Grampy, this is Granny, this is whoever. And it was just very mixed. And I wish that they just mentioned the names by who they were um, instead of, you know, calling them by their nicknames or just reminding us like maybe Granny Bush or something. So I had to keep going back and forth and figure out which grandparents were which. Okay, so the next thing I have on here is that I thought it was a bit ironic that in the beginning of the book they um, kind of despised when people said, oh, this twin is X and this twin is Y because they wanted to kind of um, just show a broad viewpoint that, um, that this twin can be funny and this twin can be funny. They're both kind of funny. But um, then they go on in like the next chapter or two and they're like, Barbara's more introspective and um, Barbara is more intelligent and then they go on to say um, Jenna is a more extrovert and that she is the show star and all this stuff and I just thought it was interesting how they kind of broke that up. So overall I thought the book was um, very cute, it was a nice read, it was a very easy read. Um, I thought that it was very educational. I did learn a lot about the first president and the first president Bush and the second president Bush. Um, I thought it was very cute. They just let us into their family. Um, but would I recommend this book? 
That's a good question. I think if someone was going on like a road trip or on the beach or something, I would recommend it. But if I, if they were like actually sitting down to read a book to study for something, I wouldn't really think this is like a really reputable source. Um, would I recommend this book? I'm not quite sure. Um, I would probably say to get it from the library, I wouldn't spend that money on it. <laughs> but this is not something I would put part of my book collection. Uh, I'm glad I read it. It kind of gave me, you know, a new insight and I got to know the twins, which I never even knew existed. Um, but would I recommend it? Probably not. And a lot of the struggles that it goes over in the book, I feel like they're kind of typical. Like you could probably already guess that all these struggles is something that, you know, president's daughters would go through. Um, and I just didn't find it shocking at all. I didn't find any like highlights in the book. Um, but if you're looking for something just to day read, <laughs> I guess this would be something nice to skim over. So thank you for watching my channel today. I hope you guys like this new series of the book reviews. Um, I haven't quite picked out my next book review, but I shall be picking it out soon and I will be uploading it to my Instagram account. Um, I'm going to link that below. If you guys are interested in following my new Instagram account, um, it's just going to be strictly books that I'm going to be picking. And then uh, probably about a week before uh, so that I can read it and then make the video and then I will be uploading the video. So if you are interested in that and keeping up with the books that I have, just follow my Instagram account below. And that's all for today. <laughs> Thanks for watching.